Welcome, Curselings. Curse Lord Trevor here with a painting tutorial about the Necrons Tassaract Vault. I really like the Necrons. They have a rich backstory, and my color scheme was inspired from Stargate SG-1, the Gua'uld. I used Wraithbone Contrast Primer as my base, then I washed the model with Seraphim Sophia. Just focus on the outer hull. I avoided the Scarab, the Emblem, Weapon Apparatus, and the Spire. Occasionally you'll see the wash start to pool. You can go ahead and use your brush to wipe it up or to sop it up. You know those Games Workshop cases? Well, models don't always fit, so I saved one of these sponges and I tore off the side. This will create a, you know, a texture so that we can make the hull look like sandstone. Next, we will be using Pallid Witch Flesh. To apply this texture, dip the edge of the sponge into the pot. Dab the sponge on the palette to wipe off most of the paint, and now dab the model and only apply it to the outer hull. Using this method, you won't be able to get the whole of the model. There are going to be parts where your sponge won't reach. So just use your dry brush and wipe off most of the paint and then dab in those areas that were hard to reach. Next, we'll be using a series of base coats to apply to the model, the first of which is Iron Hand Steel, where we will apply only to the backs of the Scarab. Here I'm using a medium dry brush to apply this paint, but I do switch to a smaller brush, a, a small base brush to get the edges, or those little feet. Next up, I use Rune Lord Brass to paint the circular ball at the base of the spine of the scarab, as well as the spine, and the face and the mandibles. One of the reasons why I do the, all the base coats first is if you mess up and get some on the silver, all you have to do is paint more silver. But again, take your time. It's not a race. Next, I use Retributor Armor to paint the emblems, the weapon socket, and eventually the spire.
Next, I use Reichlin Flesh Shade to wash over all the gold. Next, I use Cryptek Armor Shade Gloss to wash over all the Rune Lord Brass. So earlier I accidentally dabbed a little bit of the Cryptek Armor Shade onto my, well, the sandstone. So I'm going to simulate that here and how to handle it. So here I, I've already simulated it and I'm going to wash the brush. I'm going to get a little bit of water on it and I'm just going to dilute it as much as I can. And then I'll wipe it off, wash the brush again and wipe off all of the, the water and then try to sop up all the rest of the, the paint. And look, good as new. I'm returning to Seraphim Sepia and I'm going to paint the back of the scarab. Next, I used my small layer brush to add more shade to edges and cracks. Next, I return to Iron Hand Steel to get all the flat panels of the silver.
now I use Necron Compound to dry brush all silver, Rune Lord brass, and gold edges. For those who don't know the process of dry brushing, it is the process of putting paint on a thick brush, wiping off most of the paint, so that very little paint comes off. Applying it by flicking the brush back and forth, this applies the paint only to raised areas. The amount of pressure can also impact how much paint is applied. Here, I want a light dry brush, so I will not apply a lot of pressure. I am now using Stormhost Silver to the edges of the scarab. This will pop out those silver parts. When doing this, just take your time. Returning to Pallid Witch Flesh, I prepped the Scarab Power Supply, Weapon Socket, and Eyes. Next, I used Tesseract Glow for those power supply, weapon socket, and eyes. After letting it dry, I used Warp Lightning Contrast Paint to the outer edges, and then feathered the paint to the center. Later, I found it was easier to use Warp Lightning all over the area, and use water in the center to thin it out. Be careful not to use too much water, as it can cause the paint to run. Next, we're going to use Abaddon Black. But not to this part. We're going to do it on the inner hull. When I first primed the model, I primed it with silver, going in a different direction. However, I'm going to change it up to use uh, blue, so I'm going to use Abaddon Black to paint all over it. But that'll be in our next video. I hope you enjoyed part one of painting the Tesseract Vault. Stay tuned for part two, where I paint the inner hall.